Good morning guys and welcome to this presentation for the Computer Architectures project in Master Degree of Computer Engineering at Politecnico di Torino. I'm Alessandro Salvato and my colleagues are Paolo Monti and Michele Simili. The setting is the following. Modern electronic devices are too large to be completed by only one company. Nowadays the manufacturing flow is passed throughout a certain number of companies. Well, one designs the layout, one is specialized in designing microarchitectures, and one tests the device, and so on. It means that uh, in order to perform an overall control on the final system, each figure should guarantee the biggest support and the biggest effort. That's it when all is good. But uh, there are some cases where some steps could have malicious behavior. Starting from this consideration, we analyze the not well-known scenario of an Arder Trojan. An Arder Trojan, in a very first analysis, can be considered as a finite state machine, which raises a certain signal, called payload, when it recognizes that a certain uh, sequence of uh, assembly extractions are executed. This payload can overwrite one or more bits inside the control world of the microprocessor and it could some damages. For instance, switching from the normal user mode to the Super 1 or introducing some bugs or introducing some illegal data. Our task is the following. We use an evolutionary algorithm in order to mitigate the behavior of the Trojan and in order to produce a source code that is equal from the functionality and the output point of view with respect to the starting one. The algorithm is run by a particular software, MicroGP3, developed by Professor Sanchez and Squillero in the previous years. Supposing that each code of instructions contains the target sequence, our aim is to create a new piece of code that has the same output but that is very different from the starting one. Like most evolutionary algorithms, MicroGP follows a simple, precise flow. Each single individual is represented as a sequence of genes. These genes are numbers from 0 to 99. When MicroGP starts, 50 completely random individuals are generated. Then their genes are passed to an external evaluator that computes their fitness. We wrote the external evaluator as a sequence of scripts that is applying those two genes. The first step is using the genes to transform the starting code to a new code with some operations. These operations that are possible are three. The first one is adding a knob between two lines of code. The second one is swapping two consecutive instructions, while the third one is substituting a single instruction with one or more instructions that have the same effect. Then we compile and simulate the new code. For the simulation, we chose the Minimips microprocessor core, which is an open source pipeline processor that fits our needs. Then, after the simulation, we can re retrieve some important information, like the output of the program, the execution time of the simulation, and the number of memory accesses. Since the, output, the correctness of the output is very important, we discard every individual that has a, a wrong output. The other individuals are used to compute the fitness. Precisely, the three parameters are generated for each individual. The first one is used to compute the difference between the new code and the original code. For this purpose, we use the Jacquard index, which is a number from 0 to 1 that indicates how much two textual files are different. The other parameters are simply the inverse of the execution time and the inverse of the number of memory accesses. This is because MicroGP will try to maximize the parameters that is given. So, if we give them the inverse, it will try to minimize the execution time of the program and the number of accesses to the memory. Then, after we compute these parameters, we give them back to MicroGP, which and it will use them to find the fittest individuals of the generation. Then, with the fittest individuals, it will create a new population starting from them and will will have new genes. These new genes are then passed again to the external evaluator and the process repeats. The simulation stops when the last 20 generations have introduced no improvements in the code. Finally, 
we stop the simulation and that the best individual of the last generation is chosen. At this point of the presentation you should be full of information about MicroGP, our evolutionary algorithm, and hardware Trojan, so it's time to introduce to a small example. But before doing this, uh, let's first recall uh, what uh, our evolutionary algorithm should do. It takes as input a program and return a modified version of this, trying to maximize its distance from the original one, chaka index, and shuffling it. so the instructions and minimizing as much as possible this overhead introduced by the shuffling. So let's consider first this program. This is the original version of it. A very simple program that computes the product between two matrices, two times two. If you take a look at the modified version, we can easily spot as this is uh, much larger than the, the one before, but it's not a problem because uh, we knew that we could have uh, a small overhead. Let's just consider it a section. Let's see what kind of modification MicroGP does to this sequence of instructions. So, uh, we have a load, that is the LW, we have a store, that is the SW, and an addition with an immediate, that is the EDI. These two are substituted with a sequence of instructions that keep the same results, and you can easily um, demonstrate it. While for addition, instead, we simply use an equivalent one, that is the addition with an unsigned. In this case, this is totally the same instruction and we introduce no overhead in this case. So, if the trigger instruction were the ones in this section, we could say that the Trojan would have been mitigated successfully. Now, in order to see how MicroGP works, elaboration after elaboration, let's take a look at this graph. As you can see, MicroGP tries to maximize these parameters as much as possible till it reaches a maximum, or at least a value that can be optimized anymore. Uh, and moreover, we have analyzed uh, uh, our program from a statistical point of view, comparing all the tuples of the sequence of instructions that were that are in the modified program, and we compare them to the ones in the original one. And we can see that, that just a small part is repeated, managing in this way to mitigate the Trojan hardware the 78% of the times.